It was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Warren G was in the White House, ready to consume. That's right, the legal hooch flowed in the Prohibition era White House. Allow me to introduce you to ace bartender and first lady Florence the Duchess Harding on this week's Random Knowledge. I'm Geeks You Drink, Chief Editor Christopher Short. Every year we write 22,000 quiz questions, 20 words each. Some of those stories deserve more time, so we made a video series. We're geeks who drink and we read stuff all the damn time. We read stuff all the damn time. This is Random Knowledge. Since that big teapot dome scandal went down, the historical stock of the Hardings has been in the toilet, but at one time they were massively popular. A bit of digging will tell you that a lot of that was due to the kick assitude of Florence Harding. She had what they used to call gumption. Born into a wealthy family in Marion, Ohio, Florence Kling dreamed of being a concert pianist and got a spot studying at the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. But like so many young dreamers, she instead wound up eloping with skating rink worker Henry DeWolf. Scrubs will be scrubs, and eventually DeWolf pieced out, leaving behind Florence and their child Marshall. A few years later, over the objections of her father, she met and married the owner of the newspaper Marion Star, Warren Harding. Warren liked to gamble and cat around, but Florence wanted more. As business manager for the Star, she created a circulation department, hired and trained newsies, renegotiated bank loans, made editorial decisions, brought global news with a wire service, and hired the first female reporter in Ohio. Warren was the face, but Florence drove the bus. And so, the upward trajectory was set. Flossie managed Warren's social calendar, massaged his political contacts, and picked his wardrobe as he ascended to the Ohio Senate, a lieutenant governorship, and the U.S. Senate. In the 1920 presidential campaign, she wisely advised Warren to ignore a birther controversy claiming his great-grandmother was black, and funneled some hush money through the Republican National Committee to cover up at least one affair. But aside from that, Florence helped guide a somewhat wholesome isolationist presidential campaign against Ohio homie and fellow newspaper man James M. Cox and wound up taking three quarters of the Electoral College. During the Hardings' rise to fame, they got a taste for literally whining and dining all their high society friends. The only problem was, they got to the White House just a year after the 18th Amendment went into effect. Naturally, that wasn't about to stop them. And so, in an early warning sign that maybe Prohibition itself wasn't gonna work out so hot, Florence Harding gladly played bartender to the President and his friends. In fact, a staffer in the Attorney General's office would later allege that their stash was made up of booze confiscated by the DOJ. Scandal. The Hardings never got to answer for their various alleged crimes, not on Earth anyway. They both died before Warren could even serve a full term as president. And with that happy note, now you have a two-point answer you can use at our quiz. Visit geekswhodrink.com to find a venue near you, and of course, we'd love it if you liked our video and subscribed to our channel. Cheers.